the mothership. <laughs> the mothership. Uh, hey, Shannon, this is a bit interesting. It's a bit different, isn't it, what we're doing? I know. Uh, it's like we've been here before, but it's like new. It's exactly. It's like we've been here before, but new. Shall we introduce what we're doing? To yeah. Our, our listener. <laughs> our listener. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm hoping it's Jack. <laughs> it's gonna be Jack. All will be revealed. Right. So, welcome to the uh, Kickstarting the Mothership. This is our brand new podcast with me, Barbara Nixon, Shannon Stone, Shannon um, Stone. I always get called Sharon Stone every single time. It's because you look like a movie star. That's what it is. <laughs> that's it that's it it's not the name at all it's <laughs> what it is well it's better than I get confused with Barbara Dixon and I don't know whether Barbara Dixon ever made it over to Australia but she was no. in the 70s or 80s she was kind of a singer kind of ah. anyway nope, she didn't make it over here oh, I need but to you will you. you will you're already landing in <laughs> Australia <laughs> so welcome to our brand new podcast um and this is an idea that we kind of dreamt up in two minutes flat and literally pulled it all together in about 30 minutes and thought, we're going to just do it. I've never done anything like this. <laughs> Me neither. It was a bit of inspired, in, in inspired. Perfect inspired definitely so that just the background then so every our listener knows exactly what's going on with us just rabbiting away we we chat all the time right we're both business owners you're over in Australia I'm in the UK and we met is it three years ago three years ago? it was 2020 I think 2020 when is that two years ago I don't know I don't know what year it is so 2020 <laughs> two years ago in a mastermind and we just chat all the time we kind of just message each other and we chat every yeah week. yeah um, accountability buddies I was thinking yeah. about that the other day we did a lot of tag teaming yes yeah we did yeah. that we did it's, that yeah and go on what were you gonna say I, I was gonna say it's how we well it's how I survived COVID <laughs> <laughs> so I survived COVID as well and um what's brilliant about our friendship is that because we're at other ends of the globe we kind of chat in early in the morning early in my morning mm -hmm. while you're going to bed when I'm just getting up and then last thing at night when you're getting up <laughs> and I'm going to bed we kind of just at bookends of our day isn't it and then yeah the yeah we don't interrupt each other because we're doing our thing and the other person's in bed so it works nice I know way. I know it's, it's it's a very interesting relationship I hope Dave isn't concerned but we do talk twice a day <laughs> pretty much every day <laughs> yeah we do talk an awful lot um but it's all message all kind of thumb led isn't it it's messages oh, rather than we yeah don't... for sure yeah um crazy anyway, what like what, what you can build yeah, yeah exactly yourself. Like yeah, this podcast. Really, like this podcast. So one of the things that we do a lot of is, have you read this book? And have you read this book? And and we read a lot of the same self-helpy, which is a term we've now coined, self-helpy mm -hmm. books, uh, books, personal development books. And we realized probably at some point this year that we read all of these books, we ought to kind of put them into practice and do something with them. That was yeah that's a really, a really good idea <laughs> yeah, it's only taken actually... us it's only taken us well me this is my seventh year in business and you've been in business a lot longer so it's a good time it's a good time for everyone I think <laughs> yeah, exactly so if we're reading all of this stuff and I spend a small fortune on books I read mm, a rich we make book. authors rich <laughs> we do. and we were talking about it again this is a fun <laughs> fact that we kind of we read in all the different mediums, don't we? Yeah. So Physical I books, have, audio yeah. books. If it's good, we'll buy it three times in three different ways. And then we'll join the programs or I think that's the next step. Join the programs, go to the events. Yeah. Yeah. Or And what I also do is if I really, really like it, I'll buy it and gift it to other people as well, to my clients, to my friends, to people, just general mm. people in the street. So I'll just give them that's, a book. So authors love me I am literally paying your kids way through college just 
Barbara Nixon in the UK alone, like she's up there. <laughs> yeah. If you have a book, you want me to like it. Because <laughs> so yeah. I'll buy it in all the ways, all the different ways, Kindle, Audible, yeah, all the different ways. So that's where this podcast came about. We thought, wouldn't it be fun if other people could come on this journey with us? Because people ask me all the time what books I'm reading and I'm sure they do. You you recommend your books to to clients, oh, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's like my favorite thing to do. Like <laughs> really it is. And it's bizarre. Like I never read any books until I started my business. And mm. now I'm just so fascinated, especially the self-helpy ones. Like there, yeah. that's where I live. I cannot pass a department store without like just like getting oh. back into that aisle. And yeah, it's Me. it's interesting. Have you, is, were you not into self-helpy books before, before your business then? No, oh, no, well. not at all. And the mothership that we will discuss was the first ever book yeah. I read. Yeah. Really? Oh, no, I didn't know that. You see, yeah. I, I had a, um, a dad that was quite into self-helpy, not all the, not like crazy, like we are completely addicted, <laughs> but he, you know, he had a few that were up his sleeve. So I remember reading my first self-help book when I was about 15 I've been totally wow. addicted to yeah I won't share with our listener how old I am now but it's a lot older than 15 <laughs> so uh, my first one I think was uh feel the fear and do it anyway by Susan Jeffers which is mm. still an old classic yeah yeah but today yeah. we have the mothership which is your your introduction to um world of self-helping and yeah it is it's the OG <laughs> the OG himself do you want to introduce it yeah so we've got the success principles by Jack Canfield and he was also the co-creator of chicken soup for the soul which actually was the book I was trying to buy but the bookstore were out so the guy at the store was like oh we've got this by Jack Canfield and I was like I don't know the success principles <laughs> I'm after chicken soup for the soul like that sounds so much better um and yeah I picked it up and you know it's um it's very well used it's like pages are like floppy and brown but I love it I love it that way <laughs> I do now at the beginning it was like I wanted them so pristine and now it's like no 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 you highlight them you like bookmark them you make sure you do something with it. <laughs> I, I'm the same. So I've got my copy here and it is just the most raggedy, dog-eared. I've got bits of like receipts in it. I've got um, like bits of tissue in it. You know, anything that made wherever, you know, I was. Uh, it's been around. <laughs> I'll grab something and just stick it in as, as a bookmark. So do you have a nice posh bookmark then? Um, I no, I've got your equivalent. So I've got on page, what have we got bookmark? I've got a few in here actually. Page 452, there's a bookmark, um, get real about your retirement. Um, that's Ooh, the that's heading I seem to have bookmarked. That's but that's a meaty one right there, isn't it? <laughs> it can't, it kind of, <laughs> yeah. I like to I'm start that. Cry in a corner. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh the ripe well, age of my early 30s that's what I that's what keeps me up at night <laughs> <laughs> that's what it was worth doing for you uh so the the idea behind this this podcast is we are going to pick a book every single month and we are going to um implement it we're going to implement it to the best of our ability for a month and then take you on the ride with us um, by hook or by crook whatever that looks like you know I'm sure at times it's going to be really painful uh, but we're going to be like superhuman beings by the end of I don't know one season oh sure. yeah yeah one book alone I think can change your life if you implement it so I if hear you so, it, yeah okay. yeah that's the thing um so this book is is a bit of a meaty one to start with so if you've not seen this book it has how many principles did you say? You said it earlier, didn't you? 16. 67. And that's the revised edition as well. I think they added 
an extra 10 or something for the digital age. Oh, really? Oh, no, I've got that one. No, I've got 67. Yeah, yeah, 67. The digital age starts at 63. Have you got that one? Yep, yep, same one. Yeah. So there's 67 in this copy too. In this copy, yeah, me too. Yeah. So 67 principles, 67 principles, which are the success principles. And each one is so good, isn't it? It's mm. just so, so good, which is why we called it the mothership. The because, mothership. Yeah, it is a good one. If you're not going to only going to buy one personal development book. This, this is, is it. Probably, isn't it. Yeah. But, um, saying that, don't stop listening to us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've you know? got many more. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I've got well, that's the more. thing. It's like you, I think I heard a thing with Oprah, whether she said it or she received the advice. Um, someone said that, you know, all the books just sound the same. And whether she said it or someone else, they were like, well, that's the point. Because if we read it once or told it once, we would, would never get it. So we have to hear it multiple times from multiple people in different ways. Um, so, yeah, but yeah, totally. If, if there's only ever one book to get, this literally is it. And I'm glad we're coming back to it. I think I've read it maybe twice, cover to cover. And then our recent attempt at it is the third time. So now yeah. we're going to like dial it up and take it where we haven't taken it before, I think. Where we haven't <laughs> taken it before. You and Nelly in yeah. the background. So, and I completely agree. I have read it cover to cover um, a couple of times as well. And no, actually, I think I read it cover to cover once. Then I had a go at picking out the ones, the principles that I really wanted to focus on. Uh, mm. But this is like you've just quite rightly described. It's going to be somewhere that we've not been before because <laughs> we're going to really dial it up this month. So the plan is, because we can't spend 67 weeks on this book, as much as we'd love to. The plan is um, we are going to pick out the principles that we really want to focus on and we're going to mm. focus on those for the next four weeks. And oh, we might pick a different one every week or just, but we're going to focus on this book for the next month, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, maybe today we'll come up to speed with where we're at or maybe some of the principles that we want to pull out and discuss. I think definitely yeah. principle number one, when I first picked up this book and I opened it and I saw principle number one, which is take 100% responsibility for your life, I was like, I'm done. That's it. That's all I need to hear. <laughs> right? It's so powerful. I had exactly yeah. the same experience. I read it. I just read the title, take 100% responsibility for your life. and went, okay. <laughs> I have work to do here. I'm just going to spend a little bit of time just focusing on this. The, that yeah. principle alone is so powerful, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. And and it really is. And I love what I think when you read books multiple times and you will scribble in them, like every time I read this one, I used a different pen or something. So I can see, OK, what stood out to me the first time mm -hmm. and the second time and now the third time. And sometimes it's the same thing, but sometimes it's like new levels of it or new layers of it. Um, but I I hold on to that one like with dear life. Hold, take 100 percent responsibility for your life is like everything. Me too. I really love that one. And it was it, I had so many aha moments with that. Um, I remember get, having to buy a new journal for this book because I really wanted to like journal it out and get it all out of my head of all the mm -hmm. things that I needed to take responsibility for and all the places where I was blaming whether it was mm. the economy or just you know the government or you know any e external stuff where you just find yeah. yourself in um, and just bring it back home to me it was so mm. powerful it, it was yeah it really is game changing it is like and I think as much as it puts you in the power position it can be a little bit painful I think as well it's like <laughs> did I really create all of this did I really mm. make those decisions or indecisions it like it really gets you looking at everything and it, like it really is a reality but I think that like the the silver lining and the beautiful thing is well, you do create everything in your life. And that's, that is a good thing as much as it, it can be a bit of a negative thing, but like it, it's the knowledge is power. So now we can do something about it. 
Absolutely. That self-awareness is key. And I'm just looking through at what I, I've underlined and I've scribbled on here. And the first thing that I underlined, I'd be interested to see what, what you did. I've actually highlighted a whole paragraph, which I won't read out, but I've underlined everything you think, say and do needs to, co needs to become intentional and aligned with your purpose, your values and your goals. And I thought that was so, so powerful because at the time when I read it, I was... I remember being quite scattergun and I thought, oh, hang on, let's talk about being intentional. Let's think about being intentional because that one word alone combined with you take responsibility of your life. And I thought, ah, oh, hang on a minute now. I've been, I, I've been missing a trick that I didn't even know was there. Mm. Um, so what, what was the first thing that you underlined? Well, I, I highlighted that as well, but the first thing was... Well, I kind of highlighted the, the headline, so let's not read that out. Um, okay, so aside from the headline, um, for it is you who creates the quality of the life you lead and the results you produce. So it's mm. kind of like the headline in different ways. Um, but then the next kind of section within this principle is under you have to give up all your excuses. And I highlighted you have to give them up forever. It's like, yes. oh, you, you can't just give yeah. them up for a moment or like when you feel like it. <laughs> you have to give them yeah. up forever. Forever, forever. is a long time. And forever we don't do long... anything forever. Like <laughs> what do we do forever other than like breathe and wake up every day? And well, now we don't it's even like... do that forever. Do we? <laughs> <laughs> we don't even do that forever. <laughs> Wait, that, that forever that thing. but I like I like that I, that I just really really love it I you have to, to give them up it's a full stop moment isn't it it's mm. a full stop moment you just have to stop with your excuses yeah and, and yeah once you do that that's uh, isn't, right let me just go back a step that's not an easy thing to do at first is it mm, no because imagine like if you observe yourself through the whole day even like like wherever your day starts or ends today, like think, okay, I'm not going to have any excuses today. Even if you just wrote them all down, there would be hundreds, I think, at least a hundred every day. Like, I don't want to get up early. I don't want to, <laughs> I just want to yeah. stay in bed. It's like so cold. All the, yeah, like, that, all the stuff. Cause yeah. I, but yeah. The, and the, the, the excuses that you hold on to as well, that you use time and time again. I remember my favorite excuse, and I'm using the word favorite loosely, but favorite excuse, most common excuse that I'd use back when the kids were little. And just to put it into context, my eldest is 26 now, so this is going back a while. I used to say, and I was in a corporate job back then, but I used to say, oh, I'll do it when the kids are older. So instead of saying yes to opportunities that actually I secretly wanted to do, I'd go, mm. I'll do it when the kids are older. It was my get out of of jail free card if you like of oh you know I'll, I might get off the hook my kids didn't even care they wouldn't have cared whether I said yes to a project that was outside yeah. of my comfort zone. they didn't know they weren't bothered but mm. yeah that was, my, that was my seemingly valid plausible excuse that I just really yeah to myself. yeah Perfectly. yeah and it's like so like in the moment we can think like we can almost like I think the the harmful excuses are the ones that we just brush off it's like I'll do it when the kids are older or I think mine is like it's like a stone family um gift in inverted <laughs> commas the mm -hmm. it's it's we'll see it's just like two words oh, we'll see yes. yeah oh yeah oh that really hit home yeah <laughs> that. that's a, that's definitely yeah um uh, and a, a saying from my yeah. childhood we'll see we'll like, see no, what does that mean what I don't yeah. like it even now I'm gonna have to go and, and do something yeah <laughs> it actually it, it it kind of means nothing but it kind of mm. means everything it's like it can be like oh can we go to like my daughter wants to go to Paris and I'm like yeah we'll see but there's no real plan around it at this stage or it could be like it can be those monumental things or it can be um oh am I going to do my live video today we'll see like, am I going to call that person? Oh, you know, it, and, and I think, yeah, yeah. And, you know, the sum of how we spend our days is like how we spend our life. And when, totally. That's our pride. yeah, 
you yeah, know. Yeah, and then it just drags on. Really. It, it really does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, oh, we need to watch out for that one. So thank you, Jack. That's a bit of a gift already. We've only been doing this. I know. For We're on page five. Gosh. (laughs) On page five. We're going to be here a while. You need to get comfy. Get that big cup of tea. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. But yeah, um, we'll see. We need to watch out for that. I think when you start spotting your excuses, we'll just stay on this point for a little bit. Just It's a big one. Yeah. It's a big one. Let's work on you, Barbara. (laughs) <laughs> Cheers, thanks mate um <laughs> when you when you start spotting the excuses and start seeing them for what they are though it's a game changer isn't it because you can literally choose again in that moment so again my my mm. we'll do it when the kids are older oh are older when I spotted that in that moment of what was that complete lie that I just said that what I just said was utter tosh that came out of my mouth no mm. I'm gonna say yes I'm gonna say mm. yes because I secretly want to do this and I might yeah. be a bit scared to get out of my comfort zone but I want to do it and I know that if I don't I'm gonna be kicking myself later mm. and I think one of the the realizations that I had was that you never you can tell yourself any story that you want but you all we all secretly know when we've just we've made an excuse so when an opportunity mm. passes by and we go oh yeah I was waiting till the kids got older I can tell you that nonsense and you might believe me which is fine but I know deep down mm. inside that I've got a voice going yeah you, you just because you couldn't you yeah didn't, you or you couldn't be bothered yeah. or whatever so I think it's, but again, taking 100% responsibility. Yeah. And and I think one thing you said is like, you knew, it, like beyond it being an excuse, it was a lie. And yes. like, if we drill it down, how it's like, if we're not making excuses, how many times a day are we lying to ourselves about yes. what we can do? And mm-hmm. what you said yesterday when we were chatting really stuck with me, it's like the, our rock bottom isn't, the hard part it's actually our comfort zone that creates more problems and I think that's where the excuses and the lies keep us there and that's more important to do something with than any time we hit like a rock bottom in inverted commas I because we accept anything we can tolerate and accept absolutely anything I Mm. um I wrote an art a blog post about this the other week actually that we're years and years ago again when the kids were little everything could happen when the kids were little so when the, <laughs> all my stories happen when they were little so when we were little we were kind of doing stuff in the house and and we wanted to renovate our kitchen and we decided not to because there was all a lot of other things going on um mm. and we couldn't cope with the upheaval now the problem was that our our hob had had only um I think it was either one ring or two rings working so we, we thought oh we'll we'll just put up with it for now it was two years I got so good at one pot cooking it was untrue it became just normal and it wasn't mm. until we actually did do our kitchen that we thought oh my god we've been putting up with this what were we thinking yeah and this is a mm. and it became our comfort zone it became normal and we can we mm. can put up with so many things when we're just okay yeah so ask ourselves what is it that we're we're putting up with that we need to just fix Mm. and I think it's like that's a really good example because it's like little things will just chip away at us and I like in the moment it's like oh something might break or like whatever the situation is and then it's like okay we can deal with it temporarily or whatever but then like you can two years can pass and then it's like wow I put up with it for that like and then it's like what else is chipping away at you like in all the areas of your life and yeah and and it's crazy it's like that's that's why I think like decades and years can pass and like you Mm. can lose your life based on like the smallest detail of the excuse or I I just you know just lived with it oh yeah I have this um this game if you like that I play with my clients when excuses come up and it's a million million pound drop and so the, the way it goes is if I was to send you by Wonka Vision the uh, a million pounds like on your doorstep now, would you do the thing that you were putting off on or having an excuse for? 
So mm. would you, Shannon, would you do the thing that you've currently got an excuse for? Yeah, for sure. You exactly. Everybody says, yeah. yeah. So yeah. all of a sudden, the excuse is just gone, hasn't it? It's not a reason, yeah. it's just that. Yeah. Um, and that's what we need to think about, the benefits of doing it. So you're mm. now thinking, oh, if I do it, I'm going to get a million pounds. Then why mm-hmm. aren't we thinking about the benefits of doing the thing all the time rather than the task that we're, we're doing, which feels a bit mm. scary or plain or long or whatever it is, other meaning that we yeah. attach to. Mm-hmm. So I think mm. that's, that's kind of the secret to, to excuses. And yeah. So, Yeah, that's a good little hack, I guess, you can keep with you. It's like, well, what is the benefit? What am I going to get out of this? And just focus on that, not like you said, the task at hand. Yeah, exactly. Plus, I always think as well um, that it's really boring putting things off, isn't it? So the thing Mm. like we were talking about, um, should I do this live video? Um, Mm. We'll see. One day I might do it later. And then it just becomes a tomorrow job because you're always going to do it. Yeah. You'll always same to-do list isn't it yeah and 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 I think like you lose trust with yourself as well it's like you know are you going to be someone who does what they say they're going to do not to other people but to yourself like the most important person in your life and I think like my whole selfie healthy journey has been about rebuilding that trust with myself like I was the most indecisive person like ever and it'd it'd be funny I'd be like I went to a restaurant with some girlfriends and they were all business owners and I'm like sitting there with the menu and the person's like coming around I'm like I don't know what I want I can't decide and um my friend was like oh she can do a video or like a live stream video but she can't decide on what to eat and I'm like oh that hit a little bit hard I was like but she was right and um yeah the whole like this whole selfie healthy journey has been about building that trust with myself and if I say I'm going to do something I'm going to actually do it and sometimes like just the words alone and telling myself that is not that that's not enough sometimes I have to put things in place like personal accountability or public accountability works well for me if I tell someone I'm going to do something or Barbara is sitting there waiting for me to show up or whatever it is like I have to do it and until you build that muscle, and I think, you know, I do these little hacks to make sure I follow through on what I want to follow through on. I, I love that. I think you're so, so right in terms of keeping the promises to yourself, because often that that's the first promise that we break. We're so good at keeping mm. everybody else, pleasing other people and, and not pleasing ourselves. I, I just want to pick up on something that uh, reminded me of, uh, as you were talking, is how you do one thing is how you do everything. Yeah, I love that saying. And so mm. you can, yes, you can do a live. Yes, you can, you know, help people market their businesses. But can you order a pizza or a risotto? Which to do, what to do, what to do, you know? <laughs> yeah. But it's mm-hmm. looking at where that common trait is feeding all the way through into the smallest parts of your life, which are often the, the, the best bits, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, for sure. It's a big one. It's, 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 again, it's, it's like, it's the small thing, but it's the big thing. Such a good one. Right. So pick yeah. another one then. What do you reckon? All right. Let's have a look. Well, I do love hundred percent responsibility for your life has to be like ground zero game changer. Um, one that I looked at again recently and I opened up chapter or success principle number six and I was like, I kind of rolled my eyes. I was like, it's used the law of attraction. And I was like, oh, not this thing again. Um, <laughs> I kind of get to the point where I'm like, I've, I know it. I've heard about it. I understand it. But then I opened it up and I, I, I highlighted new things in there. Let me tell you what I highlighted that was new. That's right. What's your take I, on law of attraction? I, oh, I love it. I could talk about it forever and a day. I'm a... Um... A massive advocate, but there's one before we go into the law of attraction. Can I just bring us back? Because I actually think it's related to success principle number six, which is mm. number four, which is believe it's possible. Because this is kind of the mm. foundation of the law of attraction, right? Yeah. And, and I, this is one that I kind of put a post it note in um, because. This is where I think so many of us, and I'm going to put myself into that category as well, 
fall down, especially when it comes to attracting what we want. We don't mm -hmm. actually believe it's possible. We might want something, but we don't, but you know, secretly deep down inside, believe yeah. it's possible. And yeah. that's, I think, like mining for the, the the stuff, isn't it? Say, right, why do do I believe it's possible? Do I? Mm. And, and what is it that's stopping me from believing that? And what could I do mm. to change my belief about that? And once we've done that, then when you get to your principle, which is number uh, six, use the law of attraction, it becomes so much easier because there's nothing, you're not getting in your own way. You're not holding yourself back. Mm. You know, this is the foundation of the law of attraction, I think yeah that that's i i do love believe it's possible because it's and you and you and me are like two peas in a pod very ambitious like we want all the different things but do we actually believe it's possible for us mm -hmm. and 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 what do we believe to be possible as well because i remember when i first started my business um i shared this recently on a live stream my first ambitious like my big hairy audacious goal was to earn $700 a week which is it was actually less than what I was work um, earning in my job before I started my business so $700 a week is probably like 350 pounds like not a lot of money but to me I was like if I could only earn that amount like my business would be so successful um and like I earn so much more than that now, but that was all I believed was even possible for me um, in my own business. And so what I started to do, I don't know how I got to it, but I started to look for ways other people were growing their business. Mm -hmm. And um, what's his name? Entrepreneurs on Fire, John Lee Dumas. Yes. Um, he does a monthly income report. And I came across his, 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 his podcast um, and I found out about his monthly income reports and I'm like, oh, that sounds interesting. So let me read them. And this guy was making like $100,000 a month. And I was like, what? He's doing a podcast, doing that kind of money. And so all that did for me or what, the, what I took out from that was this is what's possible. This is what he's doing, very transparently sharing it. And so as much as I, I, back then I was still ambitious to be a millionaire and that's been my goal and all the different things, but did I actually believe it was possible? Cause I was like, my actual goal was $700 a week. Mm. Um, if you believed it was possible, then that wouldn't have been your goal. But yeah, if, but that was your goal in your belief system at that point. Does that make yeah. sense? So yeah. Yeah. Because you achieved a lot more, but mm. then you work with what, I love the saying by, um, I think it's Maya Angelou actually, where she said, you work with what you've got, uh, you do your best with what you know, and then when you know better, you do better. And that's the yeah. thing, you start with the goal has to be within your belief mm -hmm. and then you can stretch it. Obviously it's going to grow. When I yeah. started my business, I was, you see, I was never, I never even thought about money and a figure uh, when I started mm -hmm. my business because I'd come from 12 years of corporate being in, uh, you know, working eight till long hours, eight till six. I, and I never took the kids to school. I, at that time, I had um, two kids uh, and a stepson. I never did the school run. Um, I had to book time off to go see them in the nativity play. You know, mm. it was just what it felt like work and home, work and home. But I never did the, the things that I wanted to do as a mum. So mm. when I left my corporate world, uh, co corporate career all I wanted my own my only goal was I want to do the school run every day so mm. there was never a financial figure but obviously there had to be in order for me to not go back to a, a, a job so yeah. there had to be I have to earn this but it all had to be around I want to be free to do the school run and it took me ages to believe that that was possible because I kept booking clients you know uh, at that time at school one times and yeah then I'd have to say no I can't do that or or I'd tell myself oh they'll 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 not work with me if I can't if I don't say yes to them it took me a mm. while to go no my business my rules I can do I can do this I can live within these boundaries but mm. um so believing it was possible I wanted it but did I believe it straight away probably not but I had to I had to really instill that belief and work mm. on it um, yeah 
but once I did it was just glorious was it yeah and I think that's like the beauty of reflection and checking in as well and like well where am I at what do I actually want what am I doing and like that that's probably when you picked up that I'm actually not doing the school run like the one thing that I really wanted to do the whole reason I left you know the corporate space and the mothership that we have the success principles it I think it gives you that opportunity to look and see okay let me do like an audit of my life of my excuses of what do I want do I believe do I actually believe in myself um and then you can make these changes yeah so then going back to your principle which is the law of attraction um what is it about that that you found interesting or sticky or you got you know I know you said you had a bit of resistance around it what was it that came up for you yeah I think I think for me I think it's the law of attraction I think is one of those things that is just so spoken about and I have this I think I really go through this love-hate relationship with the self-help things and um but I like every time I I think that the resistance is part of it but every time I come back to it it's like oh it's all good you know it's, it's here to help you um but new things that I highlighted I think really were the foundations like in here he's got step one step one is to ask for what you want not what you mm -hmm. don't want and yes. even even just being very specific around that it's like are we actually asking for what we want or for what we don't want and like you can talk about the science of law of attraction and that type of thing but even just you know you do get what you focus on are you focusing on you know it's like uh not working hard uh or maybe that's a bad example what's an example of like asking for what you want but actually um, okay. you're asking for uh, what I don't, you don't I, want. I don't have enough i don't have enough clients i don't have enough time oh i'm never i'm okay. never going to be rich um, yeah oh I'm always too busy I never have enough time or mm. um one thing that I used to say again when the kids were little was um I can't have anything nice I can't have anything mm. nice because I'd buy something um and then it'd get broken or somebody'd mm. spill something or the dog would chew you know it yeah it would be like in like a pair of slippers or a book or something and I'd mm. instantly say oh I can never have anything nice and it was mm. again it, shines a light on what you what you're asking for I'm I'm yeah saying, yeah I can never have anything nice. well I won't I won't have anything nice you know yeah um, yeah everything will just get ruined or get spoiled mm. or I'll you know, just go for the the cheaper option of things or the things that I don't really want so yeah. because of this belief mm. so I I say this all the time to to my clients um ask what you are you asking for what you want or are you asking for what you don't want because we do it all the time in just mm. the things that tumble out of our mouths on a just without even thinking <laughs> about it yeah it? yeah we have mm -hmm. to just really catch ourselves like mm. well let's have a thing um we uh, it actually happened the other day it's probably a really ridiculous example actually it's the only one that I can think of in the right now is we were going to uh Dave and I Dave mm -hmm. is my hubby and we were going to uh, somewhere and we had to park up and we didn't have any change for the car parking meter and he's going oh we never have any money when we need it and I'm like really is that true and what it meant was we never we never have any change and that is true we're like mm. we just never have like you know a change of pound coins put in the meter and the meters yeah. that we always use, they're always you know that don't do have cards or anything we're just getting round to that in certain places now yeah and so we're like rummaging in the glove compartment in our pockets and bottom of our bags <laughs> and all the rest of it looking for pound coins and it's gonna we never have any money and I'm like stop that's not true that's just a just a lie that you're just saying mm. you know, it's just a lie but it's things that just tumble out of your mouth in the moment yeah um, that yeah things that we're asking for that we don't want mm, what do you think? yeah those things to watch and go right that's just tosh what you've just said yeah you know, yeah it is it's it's those little things so yeah I think it is it's asking for what you want not for what you don't want um I, I remember a client saying um, and it's like these little nuances as well she's she wanted a certain number of uh clients by a certain date um and she was always focusing on 
the clients, I, I want all the people to reach out to me. Like, I just want people to reach out to me. And so she started getting that. She started getting people reaching to her. Um, but she never really focused on them actually working with her. And it was like mm. that little nuance. And it's like, are you focusing? So if it's your business and you want clients, um, are you actually making the space to actually work with them or just, just for people to reach out? It's like, no, I, I want to work with people. I want to help them get amazing results. Like that's what I want to focus on. And it's these small things. It's like, you know, right. then you can, yeah, yeah. It's, it has that's, a spiral effect. Yeah. That happened to me a while, uh, a few years back, actually, that I want, I kept saying um, that particular year, I think it was probably about five years ago, I wanted to be booked out. I just want to be booked out. I want to be booked out. I had the craziest, busiest year that you have <laughs> ever known in your life, but it wasn't always, it wasn't like constantly booked out client wise. It was, yeah. I was on the school PTA and I did this and I did that, you know, all sorts of <laughs> other bits and pieces. And you I was were just booked like, out, yeah. yeah. <laughs> In every possible anything. way, yeah. And it got to about this time of year, probably July time, I went, yeah, that's, I need to be more specific with what I want because I'm like shattered and I'm doing all the things mm. but not the stuff that I want to be doing. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. What yeah. you want don't want yeah I've got a question for you since you're the resident mindset coach why mm -hmm. is it <laughs> why is it that this stuff just doesn't come naturally to us or does it come naturally like why is it that we are in this debacle of having to look at self-help good question isn't it because we're human ultimately that's the answer to all of our problems we're just human beings and we're all flawed and our brain doesn't work like that because our brain is wanting to keep us safe and mm. that's its function to keep us safe and so it does it safe isn't that uh, its idea of safe and our idea of safe is very different so its mm. idea of safe familiar it wants to keep us in the familiar which is what we call our comfort zone so it'll do all sorts of stuff to keep us in the familiar and mm. that doesn't always tie up with us getting what we want which is the success and the wildly exciting life and you know mm. doing but so um so that ultimately it's because we're human and so if you mm. listen to this oh my god that's me i know that's me that's me yeah because we're human and that's okay it's okay to to be in this place mm. but it's even better to that you're in this place wanting to do something about it that's where the good stuff lies yeah that that's the thing isn't it yeah good answer I like it <laughs> so um I've just turned to my next principle which I'm jumping a few actually oh where are you so, taking us yeah, I'm taking us to just see what I've oh hang on a minute I'm just gonna see where my that I had a bookmark so I just want to see so I'm good uh, right I'm I'm lying to you. I'm going to take you back, but we are jumping to uh, principle number 15. Experience your fear and take action anyway. Oh, that is so good. So good. So good. Page 150. Now, yeah, I should tell you the pages. 150. This is so good. This is, um, this is a, a, something that keeps so many of us stuck so many of mm. us just in the same place um when we feel the fear and instead of taking doing it anyway as as the brilliant susan jeffers says we'll have to look at that book onto our list i think yeah a, um we run the other direction or we say no and we use fear as a a, a reason for not doing something so mm. it's worth a mention this one i think um, I yeah. love the fact that you have to be willing to feel the fear. Well, I think you as really well, it's, it's like experience your fear and take action anyway. And it's like, since when did fear mean you don't take action? It's like mm. some of the conclusions we can come to as humans. It's like, just because you have fear, that's perfectly fine. But it doesn't mean you should not take action. And yeah. one thing I do is like, I just take the emotion out of it it's like okay and it m might be right or wrong but it's like okay if I've got these things to do it doesn't matter how I feel I need to get them done and so you know and I think there's times when you're meant to feel the emotion and then there's times when you get things done especially in business and you've got 
a short amount of time to get a hundred million things done. You know, sometimes you have to put certain things aside. And I think it builds your, it's like, oh, that actually wasn't that bad. Even though I was feeling this kind of way, I went and did the thing and I took the action and it wasn't that bad. So next time I'm potentially resisting or fearing that thing, I just remember, well, what happened last time I took action and it, it, it was all good and I got it done. Exactly. And this is, you're absolutely right. I think the problem is that we, we've, um, kind of convince ourselves that fear is a bad thing that mm. and it's not it's not it's not real life fear we're not the fear that we're talking about just to be clear is not somebody coming at you you know as in life or death fear yeah where, even though it feels uh, that way even though it feels that we're not talking about life mm. or death fear where you've got to do something and take action and it's terrifying something's happening to you you know we're talking mm. about doing new and doing something that's a bit of a comfort zone stretch so the things that we're talking about is not going to kill you it just feels like it at the time you yeah know? yeah kicks in. and it can feel it can feel horrific but so does exercising you know I always kind of like <laughs> that old thing <laughs> do we talk about that do you ever need a self-help book to get us to run oh. 10 <laughs> jeez um so stay tuned folks <laughs> that'll be a good youtube yeah, no. video um <laughs> so i yeah i always liken stretching your comfort zone or, or or facing your fear to or growing your confidence to learn doing exercising to getting fit it's both exactly the same thing you know but we mm. we expect that when we're getting fit it's going to feel uncomfortable it's going to feel horrific and running to that lamp yeah. is going to feel like you want to die but mm -hmm we still know that we have to do it yeah mm. when it comes to fear and doing something that causes fear we go oh no fear we have to stop no fear mm. is the same it's the same kind of vibe it's just the kind of fear that we're talking about now is just a, a sign that we're growing our comfort zone that's what growing our comfort zone feels like and the more that we do mm. it the more it'll it'll you know dissipate and reduce yeah and yeah like a muddy puddle yeah, yeah. Fear is an interesting one. I think it was last year sometime um, or a little while back, I kind of got to this place where I had pushed so many fear boundaries. Like I was able to do things that scared the life out of me previously, like doing a live stream or like doing cold calls in business or whatever it might have been or um you know, all sorts of things. And and I tackled all those things. I was like, well, they're easy for me to do now. And I got to a place of like positive fear. It's like I was avoiding doing things that if I looked properly did scare me, but I was like, I almost like brushed it aside. It's like, oh no, like that's, that doesn't scare me, but I'm not going to do it. And oh, okay. Yeah. And it's really interesting. And it's like, and I think this is where there is, you know, I can be too positive about something if there is such a thing. <laughs> um, but I wouldn't do certain things because I'm like, oh, it scares me. I don't know. But like, that's really not a scary thing. If I can do that thing, of course, I'm not going to be scared of this thing. But I think the layer was actually the comfort zone. And I was scared if I did something outside of my routine, out of my regimen, it would break the the comfort that I had built and so I was actually scared of breaking out of breaking the patterns breaking the routines and it took me a little bit to realize that it's like fear can look in different ways sometimes it's not like you know the heart palpitations or whatever the feelings you feel in your body sometimes it can like it disguised for me I feel like it disguised itself and it held me back because I wouldn't take actions that I just brushed aside but I think at the let like the deepest layer of it I didn't want to break out of again the comfort zone what I've built for myself yeah, yeah. so interesting isn't it isn't it interesting mm. when we start to work and start to analyze our own <clears throat> habits and behaviors because because you can think you get to it you think you can think yeah. you get to the end of personal development it's like oh I read the books I oh, like you know. I went to Tony Robbins. <laughs> you are fixed. And you know what? That I, 
you are on some level and then yeah, it's that yeah. because you're human right and remember that your brain is still always going to do the thing where it's trying to keep you safe so it'll just mm-hmm. do something else or that it'll bring out the same thing the same block in disguise as you've just said you'll just get again and again and again but you'll just get better at spotting it there's a, a brilliant saying that's um might have been Zig Ziglar I can't remember if I've just kind of credited somebody else and it's yours then let me know um <laughs> what that he said um new new level old devil new level mm. new devil new he said but I, yeah. I think it's some I think it's new level old devil I often certainly yeah. myself I see it's the same mm. stuff coming back but it comes back with sunglasses and a fake beard and a you know and a, yes. a, a hat on yeah and a yeah it comes back in disguise and then you kind yeah. of go oh my god same deal same yeah. deal I just need to yeah. get rid of that again get keep yeah. getting rid of it um and once we get used to that this is why we always have to do the inner work because mm. we're not going to stop being human yeah and that's probably where I get my love-hate relationship with the self-development and the personal development world it's like I've done this already like I've <laughs> I've got into the bottom of that and now like you said it's like it's got sunglasses and a beard and a wig and it just looks different um but he, it's like a merry-go-round but um I it, it's a secret weapon when you really use it it's such a secret weapon it really is. And this is what, why I don't get bored with it. I mm-hmm. love it. You know, I love the fact that it's constant inner work, that you're always mm-hmm. going to be learning and, and growing and that growth never stops. And mm-hmm. I'd hate to think, oh, I'm done. Oh, I'm, I'm done. I'm kind <laughs> of complete. I've done everything. I'm like the best I can possibly be. That feels that feels frightening to me that I'd, that that would be somewhere that I'd ever get to I'd love I love the idea that there's more to learn about me and more to learn about you know growth Mm. and development and it's always something to uncover um Mm. that's the excitement to me but uh yeah I don't know it's some different perspectives isn't it yeah it is I'm not always there sometimes I'm, I'm always on any day of the week like I'm the biggest fan of personal development but sometimes I go through my little my little fits I think <laughs> and that's when I'm like Barbara please help me <laughs> I'm done no you're not stop it <laughs> keep going, keep going. Um, right you, what's yours your next one then and then we ought to wrap it up for this week because we'll have done the yeah. entire book I know I know all righty let's let's choose one um all right so we've done take 100% percent responsibility for your life believe it's possible use the law of attraction um, and we looked at experience your fear and take the action anyway. Um, what about number nine? Success leaves clues. And that's number 94. 94. Well, what I like about this, and I haven't got to revisiting this chapter or this principle just yet, um, but it's like everything that we want in one way or another has been achieved. And if we just look for the people, all the things or whatever it is that have achieved it, like there's going to be things that teach us the way a little bit more. And we're never starting at ground zero. Um, Success leaves clues. And I think it's working out first and foremost, like what is your version of success? What does that look like for you? And then starting to figure out, well, how has other people done it? Like John Lee Dumas and his podcast, Entrepreneurs on Fire, phenomenal um, Mm. income reports and things like that. But that's his version of success. I don't have the same ambitions to follow the exact same way, but I love exposing myself to how he's done it because whether there'll be parts of that journey that I'll take or it'll lead me to something else. I think his stuff really led me into the world of, Russell Brunson and very successful people in business. Um, so I love the idea that success leaves clues. I think that's probably one of the foundational pieces of personal development. I completely agree. I um, say to my clients in my group programs all the time, not one of us is doing something that's never been done before. We're not, 
we're not like the Wright brothers, you know, that is creating an aeroplane. We're not creating a light bulb. We're not inventing electricity. We're not doing anything mm-hmm. that nobody has never done. We are literally walking in the same footsteps as somebody else, but with mm-hmm. our own shoes on. And that's mm. the difference in our own slant on it as you've quite rightly said our own slant on it our own version of success bringing our own stuff to the table and but somebody somewhere has done it before and that Mm. you can and now let's just let's just for a second take a note of where we are what what age we're living in because I had this conversation only the other day with my mum my mum is 83. She was born in war-torn Poland. She didn't have the internet. She didn't have Google. She didn't have YouTube. When I was a kid, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have, if I were to do like an assignment at school, I'd have to go to the library and read 10 books in order for me to yeah. just get, you know, yeah. the age that we're at is awesome. It's like off the charts, mm. epic. But one, yeah. we are having this conversation and we are literally sat at the opposite ends of the earth to each other. And at different times yeah at different mm-hmm. times different days of the week right? <laughs> how, we're talking, bizarre. <laughs> how bizarre we're talking as though we're sat in the same room yeah. and if we were sat in the same room it would feel perfectly normal like we've been doing it forever and yeah and if I wanted to learn something I could we talked about having books on audible and um in the car and you know on mm. on my kindle on my phone I can literally walk around the house with a book on my phone yeah this is the living in so we have got access to so much good stuff we can't wonder how how should never be a problem because mm. we've got google and youtube at our fingertips so that the, the this 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 is actually a really cool uh, fantastic principle because the one thing that a lot of people get stuck on is I don't know how to do that then mm. get your phone out get your phone out and just google yeah. how do I do yeah. that and I'm telling you you'll yeah. get about four responses this is the thing really, this pages is- and pages and I think like success leaves clues and and the fact that everything is so accessible I think is the problem because people think they take it for granted how easy it is It's like, if I just, oh, here's the 4 million results of how to do the thing. It can't be that easy or they just won't do it or they'll half ass it. And it's like, I was jumping forward a little bit because I know one of the important principles is take action, number 13. So it's like, you can know all the different things in the world or you can have the ability to look it up on the internet or whatever it is, but will you do something with that information? And um, when I did go to Tony Robbins, um, one of his presenters um, said he read the book, Think and Grow Rich, like total classic Napoleon Hill, but he did something that no one else does. And he said, I took the action. And it was like, you know, mind oh, explosion. Like, well, <laughs> yeah, like, like, well, yeah well, exactly. To our podcast today. No, exactly. It's like, oh, was that, was that what I was really missing this whole time? Like, that's the fine print of like, you can know all these things. Success yes. can leave clues. We can look at everything. But if you don't do anything with it, um, it doesn't mean it's easy. It's simple because you can yeah. easily access exactly. the things. Yeah. Absolutely. It doesn't mean to say it's easy. It is, it's, yeah. you know the stuff. We can, we can research it. We can find mm. information about it, which is the easy bit for any one of us yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's taking action this is where personal development really comes into its own isn't it because that's got yeah. a whole, whole yeah. other kind of ball game to it isn't it I feel um, like that'll become its own like genre like the whole taking action like the books oh. like Atomic Habits the ones that teach you how to apply all the things I feel like that could be a new wave we should get on that yeah, we should get that's on that. So, that's our book. That watch, we'll be launching that tomorrow morning. <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow. It'll take us 30 minutes to nut all the pieces out. <laughs> Inspired action. <laughs> sort that out. Shall we leave it there? I think that's a, a fantastic oh, kind of so end good. Point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so this was our, our first book. If you want to go get a copy, we'll put the link in the show notes. Uh, Jack Canfield, The Success Principles. And we're going to talk about this a little bit more next week, I think, aren't we? Yeah, definitely. Well, we have to talk about, you know, just before we leave, how are we going to take action from this? Like, what are we going yes. to do? Yeah. And Can we're we pretty familiar. 
people. <laughs> I know, I know. Oh, it's how I wrap um, up my client. And you'd be the same. Know, it's how you wrap yeah. up your client sessions. Like, we can talk yeah, about you... this stuff, but how are you going to apply it? <laughs> so what's your homework for today? Let's talk yes. about your action. Um, yes. So, yeah, this is the problem with having two coaches in a room with a book. Mm, yeah, so, yeah. So my, my I'm going to do success principle 45, which is hire a personal coach. <laughs> no, I will. Uh, what, which one are you going to do? And which one are you going to focus on? I want to. Well, actually, I think what I'll do, I'm going to finish reading phase one, the fundamentals. So in, in this book, he's broken all 67 down into phases. So I'll complete phase one reading it. Um, and I think that'll bring me, you know, we're going to talk about this in four different episodes. Mm. So I will, I'll read phase one and get that complete. And the way I've been reading this book this time around is I've got my yellow highlighter, which is different from the two others I've used past rounds. And um, I'm either highlighting or actioning things as I go. So, you know, it's kind of taking the knowledge and actually doing something with it. So I'll be yeah. done by phase, you know, phase one will be done. I'm going to follow suit then. So we're both on the same page. Um, so yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll follow suit. I found one actually, I'm, um, I've just shut the book. I need to find it again, which principle I actually really do love, but I'll talk about that next week. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll follow suit. So phase one complete. And mm -hmm. we're going to, the thing is, that we're not just reading it, we are implementing it, we are putting it into real life, uh, warts and all, and seeing what comes up for us. And we'll chat about that next week. Yeah, exciting. I the mothership, did. we're kickstarting the mothership. <laughs> Fantastic. Right, you can, um, if you liked this episode, please feel free to share it. Uh, with all of your friends and an audience um, if you want to chat to either of us or you want to chat about anything that we've talked about then we're both on Instagram we're in all the places we're going to put all of our links and things underneath in the show notes so feel free to DM us or um, tag us on Insta and we will we will tag you right back and and chat to you which is great we'll do the but same thing to... yeah yeah we'll tag Jack thing. we got it we got to get this to the big guy oh yeah um, at the top we'll do tag jack as well um and yeah just feel free to share oh and don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you don't mm. miss an episode okay yeah. amazing excellent so good see you later